Last week, the National Weather Service issued a warning in southern Minnesota. The warning was in jest, simply a heads up that residents may see more worms than usual due to heavy rain. But it did pique WCCO's interest in the state's wiggliest inhabitants. So we wanted to get the experts information on it. Ryan Huffmeyer is the director of the University of Minnesota's Boulder Lake Environmental Learning Center. Let's hear what he thinks. 18,000 plus years ago, uh, the glaciers receded, but they were here, right? And they were a mile plus, two miles thick sheets of ice. And as that ice came down from the north, it just scoured everything in front of it. So it took everything down to bedrock, right? So even if there were earthworms here prior to the glaciers, um, and and I, I have never seen a fossilized, fossilized earthworm, and, and that doesn't mean that they're not... Um, that, that there couldn't be some, but they're, they're soft bodied. So maybe they don't necessarily um, fossilize well, but even if they were here prior, they, the, 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 the glaciers and then the permafrost would have, would have killed them. Um, and so as the glaciers melted and our forest reset through succession, and then we had this grow up of, of, uh, you know, plants and that, well, I should say mosses and then lichens and then plants. And as it came up the forest, we know today, earthworms weren't a part of that mix. Um, and it was fungus and bacteria that broke down all the organic matter. And um, that's what, uh, um, uh, you know, that that's our forest uh, group. So earthworms are not part of the picture. Uh, just like all invasive species, us humans are really, really good at moving them. And so, um, you know, as European earthworms or as, as Europeans were, were coming uh, over to North America, um, you know, ballast at the time used to be dirt. So you think of dirt getting shoveled um, in and then unloaded over here, uh, you know, you could have potential for earthworms. Um, you know, buckthorn, lilacs, a lot of plants were brought from Europe. Uh, in the root balls, you would have earthworm cocoons or the eggs that are very tolerant to drought and and cold. Um, and then, you know, there's 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 stories of some you know farmers and that bringing things intentionally with them, right? Saying, "Whoa, this this can't be good for growing anything. There are, there are no earthworms in this soil," and intentionally bringing them. So there's multiple ways they've gotten here, but uh, just humans are really good at moving things. You know, so earthworms do breathe through their skin, right? So they they uh, need oxygen in the water, and a lot of times, um, it it may be because of uh, you know their burrows being flooded. Uh, but another reason that worms come up when it rains is that's the best time to mate, right? So unlike jumping worms, a lot of these others they need to they might be uh, you know both sexes, but they need they need to share uh, with with the other species or with the other worm. So that's the best time, right? Because otherwise they're in the soil and they're on multiple levels. They're moving all around. The best time is to come and, right, they dry out pretty quickly. So when it's overcast, when it's raining, when it's wet, that's a good time for them to be on the surface. And a lot of times that's what you'll find. You'll find, you know, like night crawlers. If you ever see them where they're connected or two, that's what they're doing. They're mating. Um, and that that is a, a, a time. Um, also, movement, a time to move across the landscape is when it's wet right? They're able to get to different places and what those cues are and what they're, you know, we think they're chemical, but we don't know exactly what is happening. Um, but it seems to be, again, movement is a time, you know, when it's raining and when it's wet. So I, I think there's lots of different uh, reasons why they come up. It, de it depends the species. There's multiple different uh, techniques. Um, some just lay cocoons with their eggs. Uh, jumping worms are are, are are like that, right? Their their eggs are very tolerant to cold, very tolerant to drought, right? They're pretty tough, and so their lay their eggs will their cocoons will overwinter, and then in the spring they hatch and the process starts. Um, but why do we see adults right away in the spring? Well, there are other species like the night crawler can go four, five, six feet down, and so a lot of them try to get below the frost line, right? And if they can succeed, like this year, we had a real blanket of snow, right? And the frost line never got that deep. So a lot of these adult worms can survive into the spring. And then we get this wet weather and 
they're ready to start going, right? They're ready to mate, they're ready to, to move on. 